coached in the NFL for 22 seasons. He took these Titans to the Super Bowl in one of the wildest finishes in Super Bowl history. He's Jeff Fisher, 22 years, 13th winning as coach in NFL history. He's got a suit on, looks very CEO. Look at that. How are you? Any good fishing lately? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where? All over the place. I know. I know. Yeah. All You're over. the Kurt Gowdy. I've of... caught enough fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, uh, so I want to talk about Andy Reid because you faced Andy many times. And you were a defensive coach, and he's an offensive wizard. <laughs> the, I could make the argument that Tennessee, like your teams, is uniquely – the architecture here is the way to beat Andy. When you had success against Andy, how did you do it? That's what we did. We had running backs, whether it was Eddie or Chris Johnson and Lindell White combined or what have you. We had running backs. And, you know, somebody was asking me backstage here, how you think Andy's doing, what's going through his mind. There's one thing going through his mind, two numbers – Two twos side by side, <laughs> and that's Derrick Henry right now. That's the concern, I think, that they have. And, and um, you know, just let's go back a couple of years because – and we'll come back to Kansas City, but, you know, I think some people kind of second-guess what was going on in Nashville because Mike Malarkey takes, takes the Titans to the playoffs and they're down 21-0 to Kansas City – and they come back and win. Mariota. Go with Mariota. Go to New England and lose, and Malarkey gets fired. What is John Robinson doing? And he hires Mike Vrabel, and here they are back in just a short period of time. I think it was a great move by the organization to get Mike in there, and Mike came in with players. He had a good group of players, and he had a quarterback that had been in the playoffs. Some things didn't go right, but, you know, this is a, a, a great step for the Titans franchise and organization to find a way to get back and and uh, uh, you know as you mentioned and everybody it's I'm excited about it you know I played against Andy Reid in high school did you do you guys have the shot of Andy and the the punt of Andy at the punt passing yeah kick he was the biggest thing? 13 year old ever yeah yeah but yeah this Andy yeah, Reid yeah. and then boom 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 I mean that Andy's just the ball guy you know he just loves football and he's easy going and he's a great communicator he loves offense he's been around great people uh, the analytic stuff, that's all in his brain, you know, and he just handles it well. So I think it's a great matchup. Is it, are you a little surprised? Um, you know, if Rabel was playing, Jeff, not long ago, there, there's definitely, uh, in 2010, there's, uh, there's a Jack Del Rio about him and Anthony Lynn. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a big man. He, he, there's a presence with him. And I think that really matters in college, but it can matter in the NFL. Are you a little surprised he's this good, this quick as a coach? I'm not surprised. He's got good coordinators. He's got a good staff. Uh, Dean is one of the top, and mm. he's got no, really no recognition uh, whatsoever this year. But So he's got good coordinators, and he has a plan. And, you know, he recognized that something is wrong with Marcus, and he probably couldn't put his finger on it. Now, right. we all say, well, he had – five coordinators in five years and right, what right. have you. But so let's just go with, with Tannehill and see what happens. And right. it was a, it was a great thing. Now I think I, I don't mean to take a shot at the guys in New York, but uh, I think um, Darnold's going to be okay in New York because the guys that were coaching Tannehill in Miami didn't get it done in Miami. And now he's, he's, he's come on again and he's got a shot. So um, I think it was a great call to go with Tannehill and just see what happens. And when you do that, you, 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 you have to rely on something else other than the quarterback, and that's the running back. So it was a perfect storm. It all just that's meshed right. together. And it happens, Jeff. It, yeah. You get things just sort of work. This year, you could tell for New England they could. The center got hurt, the kicker. You couldn't cinch it all up. LSU football. They kind of cinched it all up, the coordinator. So when you, when you look at Derrick Henry, he was a dominant. People thought he was going to be a linebacker. He was too big to be a running back. He's always been fine, but what happened? He is something has happened in the last fifteen months. Like, did somebody get in his ear? Like, what's he well, feels better and more dominant Colin, today? It's great you, you asked that. I don't know. This is what I've been told. I tried to verify it, but. Uh, one particular person that I'm pretty close with over the years, Eddie George. Um, I heard that Eddie had a little visit with Derek, and it was the the conversation was to the to the extent of pretty basic was, "Hey, dude, okay, you are a big back. Run behind your pads. Don't make people miss. Run over them. You are a punishing big back." And be who you, you know, are. 
He, I mean, he is a man now, and it's not <laughs> fun. And so, I mean, it's just, you know, I was honored that I was invited to attend the tight early this in September, the Titans uh, Colts game and in, in in where Eddie George and Steve McNair's jerseys were retired. So um, I got to spend the afternoon there. And unfortunately, it was in a losing effort against the Colts. Things just didn't feel right, look right. You kind of, well, we got some stuff that happened at the end of the game and Taylor's not back yet and all this stuff. But, you know, I got a sense then that um, maybe that's when Eddie did it or something good, somebody got to Derek, but this is a different team, and it's a team you do not want to play in the yeah, playoffs. Yeah, yeah. All right, stick around. Jeff Fisher, 22 years. I'm going to take a break, come back. Got a lot of things to ask you about. I, I think there's a little bit of a mismatch. The D-line personnel for San Francisco and the O-line personnel, especially guard center guard for Green Bay, and I'm not sure how you overcome that. I'll ask you that coming up. I want to, before we go to the Packers, I want to do two issues with you, and uh, please explain these. Jason Garrett, head coach of the Cowboys, is now interviewing for a coordinator of the Giants. My takeaway is, dude, take a year off. McCarthy suddenly got brilliant with a year off. Gruden got smarter with 10 off. Why do you think he's interviewing for the Giants job? He doesn't need the money. Yeah, the money's not the issue. It's, um, you know, as coaches, there's there's different things that that are taking place throughout your careers. One thing that happened to Jason is that Jason went from the face of the Cowboys as the Cowboys head coach, but also the Cowboys play caller on offense. And so our understanding is he hasn't been calling plays for a couple years. That's right. Now. Okay, Do you think so he misses it? I think I know he misses playing calling plays. That's just how coaches are wired. You know, and he's a he's an outstanding play caller. There's in this day and age in this game, it's way too much to to call plays and also manage a game at the end or manage a game because clock management starts somewhere at the end of the third quarter. It's not just in the last minute of the game. That's you right. have to start You're managing your timeouts, you're your challenges, the, yeah, everything that's going on. So. Colin, he wants to get back to calling plays, and he probably has a great deal of respect for that organization. They play him twice a year. He's seen Daniel play, yeah. probably evaluate him, saying, you know what, I can do some things with this kid and get get this storied franchise back on the map, and and what what could be better than having a chance to maybe go out and beat Dallas next year? That's a really good insight, Jeff Fisher. That's great insight. I haven't heard that. OBJ, very impulsive, can be immature, um, what do you make? You're Cleveland. You got Baker, who can be impulsive. Kevin Stefanski's a new kid. You got an owner who's impatient. Now I got to deal with this OBJ stuff. Do you cut him loose in Cleveland, or is he too good? Well, what do you make of what he's doing and who he's become? No, I think he's he's learning. You know, Odell's learning from this. I mean, it, this is an emotional game, and all kinds of emotions. And you can only imagine the emotions in that locker room after right. winning the national championship and his alma mater. And he's so things happen. You know, I, I just think in time it'll settle down. It was interesting. I, you know, you hear, you know, there was stuff this year about Odell saying something in pregame warmups to a, a, an opponent that, oh, get me out of here. I want to uh, be here. That's, he says that every week. That's him. It's okay. That's just <laughs> how he is. He said that to me, well, you know, when uh, my last year here with the Rams, we went and played in London. I was talking to him in pregame warm warmups, and it's the same thing. Get me out of here. I'd love to play for you. He just likes to talk. You know, he's a great <laughs> player. So um, now there's a fine line. There's a line you can't cross whether, you know, if there's an issue here with this cash and now – as I was on my way down here, I saw that maybe there was a, a pat on the rear end that didn't wasn't didn't go over very well. Those things you got to work themselves but out. You, but you he's an emotional guy. There's nothing malicious about. It. He's a great player. Tell him what to do, what not to do, and go win games. Hi everybody! Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.